We're out again exploring the Cabot Trail. This looks like a really nice waterfall and it's a fairly short hike as well. I was telling my wife that these forests remind me of some Brothers Groom fairy tale when you're walking in here. It's, it's really fun. We had learned yesterday that moose can really tear up a place. So sometimes I'm wondering if there's mooses running around in here. My wife chuckles every time I say that. I know it's funny. <laughs> mooses. <laughs> That's what I call them. Enjoying it though. Really enjoying our time here in Canada. Not so much the roads. Man, them roads. Whew, you gotta be prepared. I spilled my drink because the road was so bouncy earlier. I even spilled it and knocked it completely out of his hand and upside down. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. This is a multi-tiered waterfall that is really unique. We're gonna climb up this little trail around to be able to see the top of it. And it's pretty steep. walked over to see the other side of the loop and you they do not want you there it's, it's closed also where we climbed up around I'll leave that to your all's discretion as well whether you want to attempt that the tree hanging um, because of all the people walking up there was a little leery out to come here to a historical site since we get in here with our pass that we bought, bought an annual pass. This Alexander Graham Bell Historical Museum. This town is also the birthplace of aviation in Canada and this is the town of Bannock. My wife also is looking up how to pronunciate that waterfall and had a history. And it's Wishkaban and that is not at all what it looks like. You said it meant something too, didn't you? Like some white water. White water. They were working on sound transmission, but ultimately the telephone came because some guy in another room plucked a wire that then he heard two rooms down. And so then he thought, oh my gosh, voices could do that too. Bell was doing a lot of work with the uh, deaf and um, his father created the, um, what was it called? The, well, the sign language. The sign language. language. He called it the pictorial alphabet or something. The, the pictorial alphabet, alphabet yeah. yeah. He was also working on the uh, telegraph is when they became having an accident and developed 
and developed the telephone. It says that uh, Bell had a mental craving for making the impractical a matter of fact. To feel in your bones that the impossible is within reach. We experience a lot where people would say that something was impossible or strange or like who would do such a thing and then you find out in history people like Bell invented these amazing things because he wanted to make the impossible happen you know to create whatever his imagination was it's interesting too they were working on the hydrophobe craft Yeah, imagine that flying in the air, and you saw that thing at your brain. <laughs> that is a Chinese dragon kite. He was trying to make a boat, and he took his wife's blind. That was like custom special order, and he took it apart and made that thing. <laughs> trying to make a boat. He would make some of the craziest kites. Said that the government had commissioned a think tank um, for zooming after the Wright brothers had developed their first plane in America in order to have Alexander Graham Bell head the thing because he loved ingenuity to make a flying plane with the first engine in it and they gave him a year and a half to do it and they finished just ahead of schedule and it was like some national holiday. They canceled school and all the work and everything when he made the first flight and came in. And that's what came out the hydro bell or hydro boat right, too. Right, trying to figure out how to make the plane go better. That's how they figured out hydrofoil because they were working on airfoils to make the plane go faster. Bell was always more interested in possibilities than reality. He tended to lose interest when invention reached the stage of commercial application. This is an anemometer attached to a kite to measure wind velocity. This one's a mano metric capsule apparatus used to show deaf students the shapes of sound that's cool that's like the sand experiment where each like frequency has its own shape except for his fire it's amazing all the things that bell helped invent here's the air conditioner here he's trying to make a metal detector to find a bullet lodged in James Garfield, President of the United States. But interference from the middle spring made detection impossible. This is an invention that he made for sailors to get stranded at sea to make water from human breath. What? They had a son that was born too early and he died from respiratory failure and there wasn't anything Bell could do. So then Bell developed this thing, um, which was a vacuum jacket that you could put a patient into and it would expand and contract their lungs like the first ventilator. So his wife sounds like was pretty amazing too. Like while he was away, she completely ran the whole estate. She was um, experimenting in gardening and how to grow things in the shade. She developed the first public library. She funded the entire North American um, aviation program. It's just like one thing after another that she even accomplished. I would highly recommend checking this museum out. It was really interesting. I learned a lot of stuff in there. I hadn't had a clue what Bell was all up to, so that was really good.